cases surge across the country. The question becomes more poignant. Is this the second wave health experts have been warning of since the pandemic began? Tonight, I asked Alina Chief Medical Officer Tim Seeloff for his take. All right, first question, Dr. Seeloff, what are the cases looking like to you post July 4th? Well, it seems as though there's been an uptick in the number of cases. And when we look at the behavior of cases as it turns into hospitalizations, as it turns into ICU utilization, uh, hospitalizations and ICU utilization are lagging indicators. So we need to really keep a close eye on the increase in the number of cases since the 4th of July. It really just emphasizes we have to continue to follow our public health measures that got us to where we are now and to keep us on the right path. Cases have been going up in Minnesota and Wisconsin, but Wisconsin especially with setting some daily record highs just in the past week or so. Um, could that have something to do with maybe Wisconsin opening earlier in terms of their reopening plan than, than Minnesota? Well, I think one of the most important things that we need to do is learn from the experience around the world and around our country since COVID at the end of 2019. There seem to be examples where opening without really strictly following the public health measures associated with a real acceleration in the number of cases, and that's now in Arizona, in Houston, Texas, uh, in Florida, is now translating into more hospitalizations and stressing their healthcare systems more than before. So I think it is very possible. And again, that's why Minnesotans need to continue to follow the public health measures that have kept us out of that crisis situation that we've seen elsewhere. Months earlier, we were talking about the potential of a second wave, maybe in, in the summer, maybe in the fall. Uh, would we consider what's happening right now a second wave? You know, I, I'm not positive we've had a first wave. So I, I would say that we have so significantly flattened the curve, again, by virtue of our excellent public health measures as uh, Minnesotans, that we never really saw that spike like was seen in New York City or was seen in Italy and other parts of the world. So we have really truly flattened the curve, but flattening the curve is a long-term process and we need to continue to do that. Summer's here. People want to get out and about. We're already seeing it uh, ever since the 4th, really. What would some suggestions, what are some of your suggestions for people to still go out, enjoy themselves, but maybe to do so safely? Sure, absolutely. It, it's really important to take care of yourself holistically, take care of your family and, and your community in a similar manner, and being outside is a part of that. If you are outside, it is still a good idea to have a mask available and to mask if you are in close proximity to others, especially if you're in close proximity to others for an extended period of time, five or 10 minutes, where you're not able to keep physical distancing. Those are circumstances where it's a good idea to wear a mask. Some cities have mandates on, on wearing face coverings. Some businesses have mandates on wearing face coverings. With many people going out and about this summer, what would your suggestions be about face coverings? I absolutely believe that face coverings are a great idea. In our healthcare system, we really, um, we mandate that people wear face coverings in our hospitals and we, in our clinic settings. So uh, face coverings are a really good idea and especially if you are in close contact with people who are not in your household um, and if you're in close contact for an extended period of time, and especially if it's those two things and you're in a closed environment, uh, those are the really high risk, uh, high risk uh, examples of um, an ability to transmit or to acquire COVID. We're expecting in this next week to learn more about the, the future of schools here in Minnesota going into the fall. Um, a lot of places there's talk of maybe going back into the classroom or talk of continuing the distance learning, maybe some form of a hybrid. Where do you think the state is in terms of approaching what we do in the fall? Well, it's my understanding that the Department of Education is looking at a variety of different scenarios. I think there are examples across the world, actually, where schools have opened up and there are some lessons where things didn't go as well as they had hoped and where they did go well. 
And I'm positive the Department of Education is looking at all of that information. With the aspect of school coming into play, maybe more organized sports and everything, is there potential for a second wave if we were to say a first one already happened in the fall or just a continuation of a rise in infections? Yeah, I, th I think that uh, it, it's going to be the case that we need to continue to follow our public health measures. Uh, that's what's going to mitigate the effects of a second wave if it were to come. And, you know, again, as it gets colder, as people are more inside more and are um, less able to distance than they had been before, that would increase the risk of acquiring or transmitting a COVID infection. And we know that there are tactics that will mitigate those risks. And mask wearing and distancing, et cetera, are the ways to do that. Okay. Well, those are our questions, Dr. Seeloff. I appreciate you having just a few minutes to talk with us today, and we'll be in contact in the weeks ahead. Yeah, thanks so very much.